Always coming back and telling the stories of Kyla did this, Kyla did that. She's in a magazine, she's in a newspaper. If you Google her name, tons of information pops up. Kyla has become a uh, kind of legend. There you'll find her work, her accomplishments. First African American woman with a PhD in computer science from Michigan. She's the first uh, African American to get her PhD in computer science. And of course, her radiant smile and bubbly personality also known as the McMullen Effect. What people may not realize is behind that smile is an, an amazing amount of inner strength. Always, you know, was a hard worker uh, in school doing her work and um, always told her to do her best. And uh, Kyla grew up in Washington, D.C. Yeah, we used to play softball over here. And mind you, there is no dirt to actually play softball. She attended Oxon Hill High School, where she decided to study computer science. After high school, Kyla was accepted into the Meyerhoff program at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. My research is in virtual spatial audio. So virtual spatial audio is a way of rendering sound in a realistic way over headphones, where it sounds like it's coming from an actual place and space around a person. The Meyerhoff program focuses on diversifying STEM fields, she graduated from UMBC and attended the University of Michigan, where she became the first black woman to receive a PhD in computer science. While growing up in Washington, D.C., I did not have many role models or mentors who could advise me in matters of higher education. Her success didn't come without obstacles and bumps in the road. Kyla admits that there was a point when she didn't know if it was all worth it. And there were times where at the end where I was like, look, if this is what this PhD is all about, they can have it. Like, they can just keep it. I don't want it. But she found encouragement from an unusual source. I, you know, I had a professor tell me, you know, hey, computer science isn't for everyone. You know, have you tried education? Maybe you should be a teacher. Maybe you should do psychology. And he started naming out some other job professions for me, like computer science just isn't for you. I'm like, no, 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 I can do this. I just need to, you know, get my butt in gear. Another challenge she faced was that she couldn't picture herself being a professor because she'd come by very few women and African Americans in academia. She didn't think she fit the role of a typical computer scientist. I just didn't see myself fitting in because it just seemed so dry and just not welcoming. And I just couldn't see myself as a faculty member. Many African Americans in STEM programs experience this isolation feeling. They feel as if they can't identify themselves with the stereotypical people in their field. I was really good at teaching. I was really good at research. I just did not see myself in academia. Her friends also received their PhDs from Purdue and Michigan. And since they went to grad schools with similar environments, they knew exactly what she was feeling. When you don't have people that look like you and you're not able to commingle with these people, it makes your experience far more difficult. If you don't have a community, you don't feel like you have any support. You're kind of floating, you're isolated. But when you have that, it makes you see that you can collaborate with people. There are other people doing what you're doing. When she visited the lab in Clemson, she finally felt welcome. But like once I got on campus, um, I had never seen a lab like that where like there were so many students of color working on computer science projects and how, um, just, I don't know, They everybody was just, you know, it looked like, if from the outside, it looks like a bunch of people don't be talking about anything. Like, but they're all talking about code, and you know, they're really into what they're doing. They just seem to be a really supportive network. Shortly after her visit to Tigertown, Kyla became one of the six black faculty members in the HCC division of the School of Computing at Clemson. Clemson has the largest number of black tenure track faculty in the nation, and it's the only computing PhD program that's majority women, and majority African American. I was like, man, okay, if I'm gonna be successful at this tenure thing, then it's gonna happen here. On her latest trip home, Kyla's family and friends described her before the world came to know her as Dr. McMullen. Always have this huge book bag with her big old lunch in there, and she would put the book bag on her back and put her coat on top of the book bag, and she like come into the door like a hunchback. And my mom would say, there's Kyla. Doing great school, she kept me broke because I, um, 
had stuck up my big mouth and said that for every A that she got, I would give her five dollars. And so I was never able to keep money in my pocket. So we got along really good, and she's always very dedicated to what she was doing, but a lot of fun, too. We usually sat next to each other in class because you know how it is in elementary school. They put the talkative people with the quiet people, and I was a quiet person, and Kyla was the talkative person. They love the fact that the little talkative girl that they used to know has changed history. I believe, oh, it is tremendous. And I think she has led the way for other black women to uh, follow her path. And that uh, it's a tremendous achievement for her. We are so proud of her. Being the first black person, period, to get her PhD somewhere is definitely important history-wise. And then it, it's a special importance when it's someone that you know and someone that you grew up with. Her story can inspire us because it says that even when people sometimes may not expect you to be the best, she knew what was possible. She represents the best of the mile program. Quite frankly, she represents the best of America. Well, you know, growing up, you learn about the history makers of our parents' generations, the Martin Luther Kings, the Rosa Parks, the Medgar Evers, and things like that. And to know that I'm sitting beside a real life history maker, it's really humbling and it's absolutely just awesome. Is there any advice you'd give to like, an African American female who's having trouble, you know, in grad school? So that's a good, I have lots of advice because I did everything wrong. She was the first to do it at Michigan, but she doesn't want to be the last. Kyla shares her grad school advice to students who may be going through the same things she went through. Don't be scared to ask for help because for some reason, and I know myself included, like you get your pride caught up in doing things efficiently. It's easy to get down on yourself if you're looking at what other people are doing and trying to keep up with the Joneses or whatever in grad school. It's really important to take care of yourself in this whole process because stress can do a number on your body. Don't isolate yourself because a lot of times like if you're going through something, you may want to just like hide so nobody knows you're going through stuff. That's the worst thing you can do. But don't be scared to tell people when you're struggling because you'd be surprised who is in your corner. Like you'd be really surprised. Through everything I did, I always danced. So um, I took jazz dance classes at um, a studio, dance theater studio that's in Ann Arbor. And it was just a time where I could just unplug just no computer, no cell phone. You just have it's just you and the music and you're moving and there's nothing that you have to be like accountable to, you know, for that hour, hour and a half, however long. So that was like my release for just, you know, just getting out of the whole dissertation. <laughs> Changing the world, whatever it takes, we're coming.